If you're like me, you may be obsessed with fantasy romance and want to read as many of those types of books as possible. And I'm here today to give you some recommendations in that genre. Hey, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the third in a series that I have been doing here on my channel for almost a year now. Basically, since I read from Blood and Ash like last September, I have been obsessed with fantasy romance and I've been wanting to read as many books in that genre as I possibly could. So I've done two videos previously where I've talked about fantasy romances that I want to read and today I'm bringing my third installment. So I found 10 new series that I want to bring to you all in the fantasy romance genre. So please check out those past videos for more recommendations. But if you're new here and you're wondering, well, Katie, what is fantasy romance? I'm happy to tell you. Fantasy romance is something I would consider a subgenre of both fantasy and romance that kind of combines elements from the two. It can be YA, but it's mostly veering towards the adult territory, and a lot of these books that I'm going to be talking about are going to be 18 plus because they do have graphic explicit scenes within them which is kind of the fun of why we come to them right like the fantasies that we love but with more adult elements that we usually typically would have to turn to romance novels for so it just combines the best of both worlds i would consider that there's definitely a difference between fantasy romance and a romantic fantasy whereas a romantic fantasy does have a romance and the romance features heavily in the plot but it is not the entire plot whereas the fantasy romance is really more so the romance is at the forefront of the plot and there are more explicit scenes between the love interests. The difference is pretty subtle, but it does exist. As I have been reading through all these fantasy romances that I have been recommending, I've definitely found some that are my new favorites and it's just a genre that I absolutely adore. So I'm gonna bring you a list today of 10 new fantasy romances that you should check out if you love the genre because I haven't read them yet and this is a list kind of almost like a TBR. I won't be able to give you like in-depth analyses of if they are spicy or not because as I research books on my own I realize that sometimes I want to know like the spice level of a book before I get into it if you could think of like from one chili pepper to five chili peppers I don't necessarily know it if I haven't read it yet so that I can maybe cover in like a future video if I wrap up all the fantasy romances that I've read thus far so let me know if you'd be interested in that something I have noticed too is that more publishers are picking up fantasy romance books which just thrills me to no end I have done research on most of these just via Amazon or Goodreads and there is like a genre page for fantasy romance that I look at on both Amazon and Goodreads to find new releases or just books that are popular in the genre and gaining popularity so I will link those down below so you can take a look at them yourselves. Okay first up we have A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. Romeria is a gifted thief in the streets of New York City where she steals from the rich at the behest of an enigmatic mafia crime boss. But when a mysterious woman secures Romeria's skills at sword point she's plunged into a mystical world of opposing thrones, elemental magic, and warring elven. Her quest is straightforward. Steal a stone from Ilsor's sacred garden without anyone realizing her true identity which would definitely seal her death but the identity she has taken on is that of none other than the captured Ipsbarian princess the one who poisoned the king and queen of Ilsor on the day that she was supposed to marry the prince her betrothed the newly crowned king detests her with every grain of his being but she's more useful to him alive than dead. And so they begin down a tenuous path in exchange for her help to expose the rising plots against him. Romeria sees no other option than to embrace her role as a stolen princess, a role that brings her far closer to the king than she would have ever liked to be. Sounds fun. I like that it starts in the modern world and then goes into a fantasy realm. I think that's always just a really fun trope. So excited to see what this one brings. Next is The Savage and the Swan by Ella Fields and typically I will read most fantasy romances on Kindle Unlimited because they are on there. However, I was just really intrigued by this one so I felt inclined to purchase physical copy. <laughs> the King of Wolves was raised to avenge his parents' death and is more beast than man, more ruthless than any tyrant. As the only heir to the Gracewood line, Opal has been in hiding, keeping a low profile in order to keep her kingdom safe. However, a chance to do more than fretting behind the castle walls arises for Opal as she uncovers a plot that her parents have for her future. 
And so she unknowingly races into a plot that everyone has been working so hard for her to avoid. By the time she saw the Wolf King coming, it was far too late to stop what had already begun. Trapped and naive, Opal still has a kingdom to save and a plan, but that plan all about dissolves when her and the Wolf King lied in a burst of fate. And this is a standalone which is nice because I always love a good standalone fantasy romance, but I also really love a good series fantasy romance. I just love it all. So yes, and this one is new. I do believe it had just been recently published. This next one is A Court of Honey and Ash by Shannon Mayer and Kelly Sinclair. And yes, the format of the name is pretty similar to a series that we all know and love, but I don't really mind. Ali is a 24-year-old half-human, half-fey orphan who was trained to fight and, and raised to fear the power of the Underhill. When the Underhill shatters and makes it impossible for any fey to enter, Ali is the only one who knows who did it. A secret that will be the death of her if she does nothing. As brutal madness spreads through the fey as they lose their connection to their homeland, Ali must go on the run to find the man that destroyed magic that has existed since the beginning of time with a single touch. She must find the answer to the Underhill's shattering, hunted by the man she once loved once upon a time. Sounds cool. I love a good fey book. We have riddles. Hopefully the answer to the riddle is not love because that would be a bummer. Next up, we have Flame and Starlight by Dana Islay. And Dana Islay is an author that I follow on TikTok. And she just recently released a mafia romance that I have on my TBR for August. Hopefully I get to it by the time August is over. However, I am very intrigued by this fantasy romance series that she has released. And this one has like stated that it is explicit. Alice grew up always hearing stories of the Fae that were hunting her as her and her mother moved from city to city. She thought it was just eccentric stories from a mad old woman, but once her mother is gone, Alice lets her guard down and she is taken. Asher is tall, dark, handsome, and Fae. He claims he took Ash from the human world in order to protect her, but she doesn't believe whatever dark game he's playing with her, and she refuses to be a pawn. Sounds fun. It's like almost like a captor-captive romance that's very common in Mafia, but in fantasy romance setting. What more could you want? Next is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom by Sarah A. Parker. What a pretty flower to keep locked in a big rocky tower. And this is a dark Rapunzel retelling full of immersive imagery and breathtaking angst. Orleith was the only survivor of a bloody massacre that occurred 19 years ago. She's small, fragile, and an enigma. Now she's warred to a powerful high master and she lives her life within the castle, never daring to cross the bounds that she has drawn. She stays within and she never leaves. Out there, monsters lurk, but in the castle, she's safe. All she has to give in return is a toxic love for a man that will never reciprocate. Her savior, her protector, and her almost executioner. When voracious beasts spread across the land and threaten to destroy Orleith's reality, an ugly truth will be revealed. But in a castle filled with secrets, none are bigger than the one that Orleith has been keeping from herself. Ooh. Sounds good. Next we have A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. Kat lives disguised as a soothsayer in a traveling circus. She is perfectly content to avoid the destiny that the gods and her homicidal mother have settled her with. That is until Griffin, an ambitious warlord from the south, fixes her with his steely gaze and changes her life forever. Griffin knows that Kat is the kingmaker, the woman who divines the truth from lies. He wants her as a powerful weapon for his arsenal until he realizes he wants her for much more than just her magic. This is one that I saw talked about a lot during the fantasy romance readathon that happened in February, and they um, posted a lot that about this book a lot on that page. So I feel like it's like a good fantasy romance staple that a lot of people have read and I'm interested to check it out. Okay, this next one seems like a lot of fun and it is Zodiac Academy by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. And this is apparently like Harry Potter vibes, but adult romance and fantasy. And the tagline is that you have been selected for Zodiac Academy where your star sign determines your destiny. And this is also described as forbidden love and a bully romance. Just be aware of that. The Vega twins are fey, which means that they have elemental magic in their blood. And as twins born in the month of the Gemini, they are super rare. No one has ever harnessed all four elements, air, fire, water, earth, until the Vega twins arrive. As the strongest elementals ever known, they are a threat to the four celestial airs. Popular vindictive bullies who happen to be extremely attractive and some of the biggest beasts within the academy. Their fates are intertwined with the Vega twins, but these boys want nothing to do with them and they have until the lunar eclipse to get them out of the school. And 
the other tagline is today's horoscope totally screwed this just seems like it's just gonna be like super fun to read and i've heard a lot of people that have read it on tiktok like really like it and that it's just like a guilty pleasure Next is Dead Moons Rising by Jack Whitney. Idra has lived peacefully in the kingdom of Magnus her entire life as she rules as the queen of the northeastern realm. Their kingdom knows only peace and prosperity. Of course, these are all lies. When Idra rides out to the forest of darkness for the rise of the dead moon, she is injured by the enemy king, Draven, within her own kingdom. What she learns while recovering will shatter her entire world. She has been engulfed by lies by her entire kingdom, forced to smile and bat her eyes at banquets as nothing more than a trophy. Given a title no person ever intended allowing her to use. But the lies that throw her most are the ones that she was told about Draven. Strangers arrive on the shores and she must work with Draven to drive them back. The secrets of her kingdom begin to unravel and she must make an impossible choice. I always love a good enemy ruler romance. This next one is something that I definitely know is super spicy. It's a reverse harem and apparently there's a spicy scene every chapter so just know what you're signing yourself up for this one and that is blood crown by elizabeth brown and tori heat shara is a queen in a world where men mostly rule and slavery is common being the only queen and the only one to abolish slavery it does not make you very popular ashera is a queen in a world of kings and no one is willing to let her rule peacefully. Ashera continues to bleed for her crown while she shows people that men are not the only ones capable of ruling. But when a resistance against Ashera awakens, she realizes that she might need the help of others to show that just how capable she is and that she cannot create widespread change all on her own. And so she must win the hearts of men that are willing to rule beside her and free all of humankind once and for all. Seducing them is easy as she's a succubus. It's getting them to change their minds. That is the hard part. Especially when she's faced with an unruly and violent vampire prince, an over-the-top dramatic fae prince, an angelic king, and a demonic assassin. And everyone thinks that they know what's best for their queen. Unfortunately for them, she has no intention of listening. Sounds like super badass, and reverse harems are really fun, and I have not seen one in a fantasy romance actually, so I'm intrigued. I've seen some paranormal ones, like the Lady of Rooksgrave Manor. That one's like paranormal. Which like, I feel like there is kind of like a, like paranormal romance, fantasy romance are very much kind of almost the same thing, kind of like how the difference between like low and high fantasy. It's just my thought. The next one I want to talk about is The Stolen Brides of the Fae, and this is just like a collection, an anthology, if you will, of different novellas from different fantasy romance authors that talk about women that are stolen to be brides of the Fae, as it says. So that is my list of 10 that I have not read yet that I want to put on my list to read for fantasy romances. However, I have a recommendation that I have already read that I haven't talked about in my other videos. And that recommendation is Furyborn by Claire Legrand, um, which is a trilogy consisting of Furyborn, King's Bane, and Lightbringer. It's known as the Imperium trilogy, and it's actually one of my all-time favorite trilogies. Even though it was like originally published as a YA, I definitely think it's a new adult fantasy romance um, because there are spicy scenes in here. I will say like it's probably less heavy on the romance as some of the other books that I talked about where it's not like straight up just a romance book but I did want to put it on here because I think if you're looking for something as like a really good intro to fantasy romance this is a good place to start and just because it also is like a new adult fantasy I would say which is something that I feel like a lot of people are looking for because people that are reading YA actually tend to be in the new adult age range. Two young women born centuries apart have the power to either save the world or end it. There is a prophecy there will be two queens that rise a blood queen and a sun queen and these queens are the only ones in the world to hold the power of all seven elements when assassins ambush her best friend prince audrey riel darden accidentally reveals that she has the power of all seven elements within her and so she must undergo a series of trials to prove that she is the destined sun queen and not the blood queen a thousand years later the legend of queen riel is just that a legend 
Eliana Farakora is a bounty hunter in the Undying Empire who's just trying to make ends meet and keep her family safe. However, she realizes that even working for the Empire will not guarantee her family's safety when her mother is kidnapped, and thus she heads out with a rebel leader to try and get her mother back. Riel and Eliana fight in a cosmic war that spans the centuries, and their stories intersect in ways that are beyond imagining. Their shocking connections will determine the fate of the world. I honestly think this is one of the smartest fantasies that I've ever read and I was just constantly blown away by this trilogy as a whole and so please like read it please read it like there's also um it's also the whole series is out in paperback now and the paperbacks are so gorgeous I might need to get my hands on it but like this book has been getting more hype on TikTok I've seen more people talk about it and like I have loved this series for so long I'm just so excited people are talking about it and I did want to put it on this list so please check it out if you're interested and that is all that I have to say today for my fantasy romance list I really enjoy making these videos let me know if any of these books catch your interest down below and leave a little heart emoji if you watched all the way to the end also keep an eye out for me for a potentially exciting fantasy romance related announcement on my Instagram with that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.